Okay, you're stuck with me for the rest of the briefing. Good morning or afternoon. I've got several things to start this off today for all of you, so just be patient with me, please, as we get through them. <clears throat> okay, first, um, on Friday, the U.S. Treasury <coughs> designated Iran's largest petrochemical holding group, Persian Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company, and its network of 39 subsidiary petrochemical companies and sales agents for supporting the IRGC, a designated foreign terrorist organization and WMD proliferator. We intend to target any company in the petrochemical sector or elsewhere that provides financial support to it. The maximum pressure campaign continues and will continue. Germany's Foreign Minister Heiko Maas is in Tehran. Japan's Prime Minister Abe will be there this week as well. There is no daylight between us and our allies on the objective of denying Iran the ability to ever acquire a nuclear weapon. We also agree about the threat of Iran's ballistic missile program, its terrorist activities, and human rights abuses. Iran has threatened to violate some of the JCPOA's key restrictions, and today Zarif threatened the U.S. that it cannot expect to stay safe because, our because of our maximum pressure campaign. Making threats, using nuclear blackmail, and terrorizing other nations is typical behavior for the revolutionary regime in Tehran. Tomorrow, they will probably threaten once again to close the Strait of Hormuz. We aren't impressed. Iran faces a simple choice. It can either behave like a normal nation or watch its economy crumble. Iran's recent threat to cease performing key nuclear commitments under the JCPOA is a big step in the wrong direction, and it underscores the, con underscores the continuing challenge Iran poses to international peace and security. The international community must remain united on this issue and hold the Iranian regime accountable for its threats to expand its nuclear program. We will hold the Islamic Republic of Iran accountable for any actions against our people and our interests, regardless of whether they come from Iran or from its proxies. The only solution is a new, a, better, a new and better deal that addresses the full scope of Iran's threats. Those threats form the basis of the 12 demands. As President Trump and the Secretary have said, we stand ready to talk. Iran's leaders know how to reach us. Next, um, the United States expresses its grave concern about the Hong Kong government's proposed amendments to its fugitive offenders ordinance, which, if passed, would permit Chinese authorities to request the extradition of individuals to mainland China. The peaceful demonstration by hundreds of thousands of Hong Kongers yesterday clearly shows the public's opposition to the proposed amendments. The United States shares the concern of many in Hong Kong that the lack of procedural protections in the proposed amendments could undermine Hong Kong's autonomy and negatively impact the territory's longstanding protections of human rights, fundamental freedoms, and democratic values, as enshrined in the Basic Law in, and the Sino-British Joint Declaration. We are also concerned that the amendments could damage Hong Kong's business environment and subject our citizens residing in or visiting Hong Kong to China's capricious judicial system. Last month, the Secretary met with a delegation of pro-democracy leaders from Hong Kong to discuss their broad reservations about the extradition proposal. We believe that any amendments to the Fugitive Ordin uh, Offenders Ordinance should be pursued with great care and in full consultation with a broad range of local and international stakeholders who may be affected by the amendments. The continued erosion of the one country, two systems framework puts at risk Hong Kong's long established special status in international affairs. Moving over to Georgia, Secretary Pompeo will meet with the Georgian Prime Minister who is visiting Washington this week. Ahead of this meeting, I would like to highlight that the United States does not recognize the legitimacy of the so-called parliamentary elections in Georgia's South Ossetia region on June 9th, and it will not acknowledge their outcome. Our position in South Ossetia remains clear. These regions are integral parts of Georgia. Accordingly, we reiterate our strong support for Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. The Secretary looks forward to discussing a range of bilateral issues with the Prime Minister tomorrow. Finally, I have one more announcement for you. I am pleased to announce that Secretary Pompeo will travel to the Indo-Pacific region on June 24th through the 30th to broaden and deepen our partnership with key countries to advance our shared goal of a free and open Indo-Pacific. The Secretary's first stop will be in New Delhi, India. Prime Minister Modi's recent election 
Victory provides an excellent opportunity for him to implement his vision for a strong and prosperous India that plays a leading role in the global stage. The Secretary will preview elements of a cooperative agenda during his remarks at the U.S.-India Business Council India Idea Samba at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce on June 12. The Secretary's next stop will be in Colombo, Sri Lanka, where Secretary Pompeo will express America's solidarity with the people of Sri Lanka as they stand united against the despicable Easter Sunday terrorist attacks. He will also discuss promising opportunities for U.S.-Sri Lanka cooperation based on shared commitments to a free and open Indo-Pacific region. The Secretary will travel to Osaka, Japan, to participate in the G20 Leader Summit from June 28th to 29th, the first such gathering hosted by Japan. On the margins of the summit, Secretary Pompeo will join President Trump in meeting with Prime Minister Abe to coordinate on the final fully verified denuclearization of North Korea and to discuss ways to strengthen trilateral cooperation with the Republic of Korea on our unified approach toward the DPRK and other shared challenges. Following the G20, Secretary Pompeo will accompany President Donald J. Trump to the Republic of Korea to meet with President Moon Jae-in. The two leaders will, discuss, will also discuss ways to strengthen the United States-Republic of Korea alliance. President Trump and President Moon will continue their close coordination on efforts to achieve the final fully verified denuclearization of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And with that, Matt. Thank you. Um, uh, on Iran, mm -hmm. uh, there we haven't had a chance to ask you about this whole um, situation with the Global Engagement Center and mm -hmm. um, the Iran disinfo right. um, contract. So I'd like just to, um, what, what is the status of that funding right now? Is it still suspended? Mm -hmm. What uh, steps are you taking to, uh, well, it was suspended. Why? Yes. How were they operating outside the scope? I mean, they were clearly going after quote unquote disinformation, but not from the Iranian government, which was their charge, but mm -hmm. how specifically did they go outside their mandate and where uh, have there been step, uh, steps taken to make sure that they stay within their uh, remit? Yes, so the funding does remain uh, suspended for uh, this um, entity. Uh, and it, the, we're, there's a review process that's ongoing right now. The review process uh, continues, and that is going to, of course, ensure that the implementer's um, activity is consistent within the scope of work. Um, and, of course, it needs to be consistent within the Department of State's guidance um, on conducting these sort of activities within the GEC. Um, I think we use GEC as shorthand, but many people know that the Global Engagement Center is committed to its mission, which is to counter uh, foreign state and non-state propaganda and disinformation uh, that comes from a variety of places, but that includes the Iranian regime's propaganda uh, disinformation. So um, I'm not going to get into the specific details up here, but that uh, the review is ongoing and um, the implementer remains suspended at the well, moment. Well, is it possible that this implementer will not it, so that the money won't be reinstated? Is that is that a possible option here? I think all options are possible right. while we're undergoing a review. And then, and just lastly on this, it, it, it appears so since the first reports came out and the suspension was announced, mm -hmm. it, it has come out that the, this this organization that, that was getting U.S. taxpayer money was some of the people that it was attacking worked for U.S. taxpayer-funded organizations. Mm -hmm. Is that in any way appropriate? Again, the, the GEC found that their implementer went beyond the scope of their contract, and that's why their contract has been suspended. They're under a review, a review and the GEC's leadership um, has, of course, uh, spent time and, and had a meeting with them to outline initially what uh, they did that went beyond the scope. Right, I think that's are, all I have for Well, what, what are they going to do, not specifically in this, what yeah. are they going to do to that's make sure this that. doesn't happen in the future with this or any other yeah, the, uh, pro the project. Whether it's the GEC or any other uh, institution within the Department of State, uh, we work judiciously to review what our implementers and contractors do around the world. And we have a variety of mechanisms, including the IG, which does uh, its own internal reviews for every contract that the State Department produces. And we'll follow those same guidelines with the GEC. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, I have two questions on Iran. Sure. Uh, IAEA chief has said today that Iran is now producing uh, more enriched uranium than before. Are you aware of that? And Did you say? that he said more? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Just want to make sure we're on the same yeah, page. Yeah. Th this is my first question. Mm -hmm. And my, my second is uh, Lebanese national and U.S. permanent resident Nizar Zadka has been mm -hmm. uh, released from prison and he will be uh, going back to Lebanon tomorrow. Uh, how do you view this uh, development? 
So on your second question, um, we're aware of those public reports, but we don't have anything to comment on from the, the podium today. Um, as it relates to uh, your first question um, on Iran, I mean, obviously, uh, we see these uh, reports um, uh, uh, showing that Iran is going in the wrong, wrong direction. Um, and it underscores the continuing challenge Iran poses to international peace and security. This is something that I've been a part, um, many of you know, I was traveling for the last week with the Secretary, uh, part of many conversations with our European allies on this topic. And we think it's important for the international community to remain united uh, to hold the Iranian regime accountable. And I know that we left uh, those meetings very encouraged that our European allies will do so. Saeed, yeah, how are you? you? I, I want to move uh, another Can topic. F follow up on Iran, please. Go ahead, yes. Leslie. So, so the US being, uh, given that um, Mr. Zaka is a US, um, has a green card, mm -hmm. um, has the US been involved in any of these discussions? And is there a possibility that this involves some kind of a swap with an Iranian uh, businessman that is being held here? According to reports, if uh, we certainly hope that these reports are accurate, that he has been released, and if they are accurate, we will certainly come back to you with more information. Um, but for now, that's the only comment that we have. Are you on Iran? On Iran, okay. yes. Um, what's your view of Germany? I'll get back to you, Saeed. I promise. What's your view of Germany's proposal for a European payment system for trade with Iran that he raised when he was in Tehran? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the Secretary um, spoke about this, um, uh, and he has said, of course, you know, any payment systems um, in which there are goods uh, or services or whatever the commodity might be that is not sanctioned by the U.S. government is fine, but we would not support any payment mechanism from any country in the world uh, that would allow uh, businesses or entities or countries to engage in transactions uh, with Iran that are sanctioned entities, and uh, we are very grateful to the number of European businesses and banks who have uh, taken these sanctions incredibly seriously and are complying with them. And Saeed? If I could, I just yes, uh, go I, ahead. No, I've, I've come, Saeed's turn. Go ahead. Uh, I want to move to the Palestinian Israeli issue. Uh, over the weekend, uh, Morgan, the yeah. uh, ambassador to Israel, Mr. David Friedman, mm -hmm. gave an interview or told uh, the New York Times that Israel has a right to annex part to the West Bank. Mm -hmm. Is that now U.S. policy? And if it's not, are you going to, let's say, call Mr. Friedman for any kind of disciplinary action? Uh, there is no plan for any sort of disciplinary action at all. Uh, uh, the administration's position on the settlements mm -hmm. have not changed. Um, our policy on the West Bank has not changed. And I, I don't think there's anything new to, to so, report So when he, when he gives these interviews and says that mm -hmm. something like this, how is that interpreted at this building? Is that, is he in, you know, is he in STIB or uh, with, with the Secretary of State? Uh, how did he clear it with the Secretary of State? How does he go about it? And you're saying that there is no disciplinary action, but obviously this is not U.S. policy, is it? Well, I'd have to look again at the context of his injury, but I'd say that, that the ambassador, uh, the secretary, and everyone who uh, is involved in the Middle East police plan and are, are, this entire administration is working towards a comprehensive and lasting peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We certainly see a brighter future uh, for the Palestinian people than what they have encountered um, and that's why uh, we continue to, to work on this plan and work behind the scenes. I, I think it's important to note you know, from the authority of this podium that our policy on the West Bank has not changed. And the Secretary Can we follow up in Mexico? Mexico? Um, sure. Just to follow up on some of the Secretary's remarks, um, the President uh, also tweeted that um, mm -hmm. uh, Mexico had agreed to buy large quantities of agricultural products from the U.S., and the Mexican Foreign Minister said um, that there was no such agreement to buy those products. So obviously that language was not in the um, joint statement that was announced Friday night. So is there some agricultural component to this agreement that hasn't yet been um, I don't think that I'm going to go beyond what the Secretary uh, just said to you a few minutes ago, what the President talked about. I mean, clearly, as our two countries to work more, work more closely together, and clearly as we hope to see the passage of the U.S. Uh, MCA in Congress, that will open up more opportunities uh, for agriculture and a host of other commodities and services. So we'll leave it at that. Beatrice? Mm -hmm. the Secretary, Beatrice, right? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, the Secretary mentioned that the U.S. is now going to work with Central American countries to prevent their citizens from leaving. So could you please give us some detail about this? Have the negotiations started? What would be on the table? 
you know, again, I think that the secretary just gave all of you, you know, 10 or 20 minutes here on this, and I want to let his words um, speak mm -hmm. for that. I think I would just reiterate um, that we, uh, listen, I, I spent a, a lot of time with um, on Friday, as probably as all of you did, Christine and others who were standing outside waiting, spent a lot of time talking to our negotiators. And it wasn't just on Friday, by the way. I think, as you know, it began on Wednesday uh, with a meeting at the White House um, with the Vice President and Secretary Pompeo and others. And then, of course, there were more meetings on Thursday and then the marathon meetings on Friday. And um, as I spoke to our negotiators throughout, throughout that entire time, it was, it was a tough and, and hard negotiation. But we got to the place in the end, um, which, of course, we believe represents a new commitment um, uh, from, uh, from Mexico, the largest ever deployment, I believe the Secretary just said, of, of forces to its southern border. Mexico is going to start taking operational control of its southern border for the first time. And uh, I know that I'm very, uh, I can speak, I think, on behalf of the department that we're very proud of, of our team who spent hours, literally hours on Friday negotiating this. We will, of course, as the Secretary just said, have to have ongoing um, and continuing uh, talks and negotiations uh, with our Mexican counterparts. Yes. Hi, thank you, Morgan. Uh, on North Korea. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, when, uh, North Korea and Kim Jong-un. It's okay. has, has, North Korean Kim Jong-un has recently uh, replaced the negotiation team with the United States. And also uh, reportedly said that uh, several uh, previous negotiating teams were sent to prison camp. Mm -hmm. Do you have any information on this, or how would you do uh, We don't have any information on that. We have read those reports. Um, and, you know, the President and the Secretary have said all along that, of course, while our economic sanctions remain, uh -huh. uh, we, may, we remain open to, uh, to talking and to, uh, and to negotiations with uh, the North Koreans, and I don't think our position has changed there. Can I follow up North Korea? Sure. Uh, this week's the one-year anniversary since the Singapore summit, so mm -hmm. can you just characterize how the State Department sees specifically denuclearization progress since the Singapore summit? And it seems like talks are kind of in a stall right now. So what are the plans moving forward to restart negotiations? Well, uh, you know, it's been, it will be coming up towards the one year, as you said. Um, we think that this is, and, and many people who come before us would say that this is one of the toughest national security challenges for any administration, probably one of the toughest that uh, we will certainly, all of us, will face in our lifetime. Um, and we, of course, uh, there has been steps that have been taken along the way. Uh, we've been able to get our North Korean counterparts to the table where they have committed to the President uh, and to the Secretary of State that they will denuclearize. And, of course, we have Steve Began working on this uh, diligently. And, you know, the path, if you look throughout history, at any successful negotiation or any outcome, it's, it's, it's never linear, right? There's always ups and downs. And we remain confident that Kim Jong-un and uh, his government will see a path uh, for a brighter future for the North Korean people. And one year later, that's what we are still aspiring to and still hoping for, while not noting, of course, that economic sanctions do remain. Hi. Hi, this is June with WATB. Uh, I love your accent. Thank you. Like I'm from I'm Nashville. Home. From Nashville. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, the LGBTQ flag on yes. the embassies. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain the position of the State Department on that, on both inside the embassies and on the outside? Sure. I think uh, Pride Month that we're in right now was celebrated around the world by many State Department employees, by many embassies. Um, the secretary has the position that, uh, as it relates to the flagpole, that only the American flag should be flown there. But he, of course, um, uh, as he said in his congressional testimony, respects the dignity of every individual. And I think all of you can do a simple, easy, easy Google or Twitter search and see the pictures of uh, uh, members, embassies, and members, uh, ambassadors, people of, uh, of the Foreign Service celebrating pride. Um, throughout the world. So the second say, question. Is it, is it, there, is ahead, it correct? A quick follow up on that. Can yeah. you explain uh, why the Secretary decided not to issue a statement marking Pride Month and also the uh, last month, the International Day Against Transphobia and Homophobia? Those, those were statements that mm -hmm. were typically released annually on those days, but we didn't see those statements this year. That's provoked some concern that the Secretary didn't lend as much importance to these issues. Sure. I think that, the, as I said, and the Secretary said in his testimony, he respects um, the dignity of every individual and of every human life. Um, and he remains committed to this effort around the world. I think it was just a couple weeks ago, I'll have to look at the specific date, 
uh, we had Magnitsky sanctions, and I'll get the specific name for you, um, on an individual uh, who, of, who, of course, uh, you know, was persecuting um, uh, people uh, of the LGBT community. The secretary uh, will, of course, next month host um, the Religious Freedom Forum that he has that he also had last year. Uh, and he works around the world uh, in these meetings to talk about religious freedom, religious liberty, and that's something that I know is very dear to him. So, Morgan, can you explain, yeah, so can, Morgan, can you explain the displays that we have seen of the LGBTQ flag, the colors, mm -hmm. the pennants, banners? Mm -hmm. th those are not in violation of any kind of edict or order, no. are they? So no. what, what, what are, where's this idea that there's some kind of revolt among diplomats in the embassies? Are there, is there anything that these are in violation? I mean, I, I'm not quite There's sure. There's no, vi no violation that I'm... No. So people, so as long as it's not on the flag pole that flies the American flag, the secretary or no, and nobody else in this building has any issue with it. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mexico? No, um, we're going to... Yeah, let's go back to Mexico. Okay, just to <laughs> clarify... What exactly was different than what the agreements that were mm -hmm. nearly reached in December on this? The, the, the secretary didn't mention any points that were actually different. I don't think that's fair. I, th I mean, I think that he mentioned a number of points. The president has tweeted about it as well. Um, and we certainly laid out in the joint declaration, which was released Friday night, uh, the ways in which that the U.S. and Mexican government would be working together. As I just said, I think at the top, um, this is to be the largest ever deployment of Mexican security uh, forces to its southern border. Uh, Mexico is, of course, committed to taking operational control of its uh, I, southern I, I, border. I, I, I Mexico is committed. This, but how does that differ from December? This is what I'm telling you. You can interrupt, but the answer will be the same. Mexico is also committed to expansion of the migrant per protection protocols. Um, and then, of course, in the joint declaration, we said that additional measures uh, will be uh, looked at within the next 90 days. Friday night, the marathon night, was not uh, the certainly the first or the last discussion that the secretary and his counterparts will have. Today, uh, you know, is day one, or maybe you could count Saturday, you know, is day one. Success will be a dramatic reduction in the flows uh, on our shared border. And we won't get into specific numbers, but we expect to see dramatic uh, number, reductions in the coming weeks and months. And I would say that the uh, Mexican government uh, was incredibly confident um, in, in the actions that they were taking that it would, that we would see dramatic reductions. So but you can't say how this is different from Go ahead. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. This is Jahan Zabel from Arab News TV, Pakistan. Hello. Like, uh, I just wanted to ask about their ongoing recon process in Afghanistan, uh, the peace process. So, like, yes. a couple of months ago, we were told uh, by Mr. Pladino that there was some kind of uh, meaningful uh, uh, progress. He the, told you? He, he oh, told that briefing. I don't know, he told I don't know if you should have listened actually. to that. Yeah, <laughs> so, so about, uh, I mean, after that meaningful progress, we have seen Taliban brutalities, not only with the Afghan uh, soldiers, but with the innocent people. Mm -hmm. So uh, what went wrong after that, I mean, the, after oh, that meaningful progress? Yeah. Listen, I don't think that anything went wrong. This is, um, General Miller once said, this is one of my favorite quotes of his, he said, you have to be ready to talk and to fight at the same time. And that's certainly what we're seeing in Afghanistan. You know, we have four pillars that Ambassador Khalil Azad is working on uh, in Afghanistan. Troop withdrawal, counterterrorism assurances and cooperation, intra-Afghan dialogue, reduction in violence. I think some of you know um, that uh, the ambassador that Khalil Azad uh, is in Kabul right now, uh, he met with Ghani yesterday. Um, and, and he and President Ghani um, spoke at length about preparation for intra-Afghan negotiations, and he knows that's now essential. Um, I will be briefing uh, the, the uh, not tomorrow, but on Wednesday, hopefully, and we'll certainly, I think, have more to, to tell you about as it relates to uh, Zal's meeting. So, um, so, so, yeah, no, you guys, so um, we've been here for almost 40 minutes, and I have actually two of the most important people in my life here today, which are my little nephews, Alec and Maddox Weinberger. So we're going to end the briefing, and thank you so much. I will see you, if not tomorrow, I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.